اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم لیسن نمبر 59 سورة النساء will begin from آئی نمبر 66 ولو انا كتبنا علیہم ان اقتلو انفسکم او اخرجو من دیاریکم ما فعلوه الا قلیل منهم And if we had decreed upon them, kill yourselves or leave your homes, they would not have done it, except for a few of them. The ayat in this context are about the obligation of obedience to Allah and His Messenger. Especially obedience to the commands of the Prophet ﷺ. I mentioned to you a few incidents in which The Prophet ﷺ had made a verdict And instead what did some people do? They went to others for decision And some people when the Prophet ﷺ gave a verdict What did they do? They rejected his decision They said they weren't going to accept it And they blamed the Prophet ﷺ for not doing adl And then we learned that فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ By Allah your Lord These people can never be believers. Meaning, even if a person claims to be a believer at his tongue, his iman is not complete. His iman is not acceptable unless and until he accepts the decision of the Prophet ﷺ. How? That there is no haraj. There is no constriction in the heart. There is no discomfort. Meaning a person wholeheartedly accepts the decision of the Prophet ﷺ. And then not just accepting, but also submitting inwardly as well as outwardly. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the decision that the Prophet ﷺ has made or the command that he gives is not that difficult. It's not impossible. It is something that is possible for you. And in fact it is something that is good for you If you look at all of the sunan of the Prophet ﷺ They make a person a civilized person They give discipline to the actions of a person Every action becomes meaningful And every action becomes an act of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala An act that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves So over here Allah says that وَلَوْ أَنَّا كَتَبْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ And if we had decreed upon them كَتَبْنَا Literally we wrote And what this means is That if we had imposed, if we had ordained, if we had made incumbent upon them. That aniqutulu anfusakum, that all of you should kill yourselves. Who was told to kill themselves? The Bani Israel. And when were they told to do that? When they worshipped the calf. And you know the meaning of uqtulu anfusakum? It can be understood in two ways. That first of all, those people who have committed the sin, they kill themselves. And secondly, aniqtulu anfusakum. What does it mean? That those people who committed the sin are to be killed by those people who stayed away from the sin. So we see that even within the Muslims at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, there were two groups. One was of those people who unconditionally accepted every decision, every command of the Prophet ﷺ. And on the other hand, there were those who refused the decision, who rejected the decision of the Prophet ﷺ. So those people... who committed the sin were to be killed by those who did not commit the sin. So had we prescribed this punishment upon them that you also kill yourselves just as the Bani Israel were told to kill themselves when they disobeyed the command of the messenger, أَوِخْرُجُوا مِن دِيَارِكُمْ Or you go out from your homes. أُخْرُجُوا from خَرَجَ And what does it mean? To go out. That leave your houses. Leave your houses. Don't stay in your cities anymore. Don't stay in your houses anymore. Leave your homeland. Leave your country. So if these people were given this command, what would be the reaction? Allah says, مَا فَعَلُوهُ إِلَّا قَلِيلٌ مِّنْهُمْ None would have done it except only a few of them. Meaning only the very sincere believers would accept this command of the Prophet ﷺ. Now this statement gives us Two meanings. One, as I mentioned to you earlier, that how difficult is the command of the Prophet ﷺ? Is it this difficult? It's not that difficult. And even if we were to give this command, still there would be some people who would accept. Secondly, it has been said that what this means is that these people are so disobedient that even if they were commanded to commit what is prohibited, 
What is prohibited? Killing yourself. So even if these people were commanded with something that is prohibited, they would not accept. You see, generally, why do people not accept the commands? Because they don't like them. And what do they want to do? That which is prohibited. Many times, in many situations, this is the reason. People don't want to opt for halal, rather they want to indulge in haram. So over here Allah says they are so disobedient that even if we were to command them with something haram, just because they are being commanded, they would not accept. Just because they are being commanded, they would not accept. And this is to demonstrate their extreme disobedience. Their extreme disobedience. That وَلَوْ أَنَّا كَتَبْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ أَنِ اقْتُلُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ أَوْ اِخْرُجُوا مِنْ دِيَارِكُمْ مَا فَعَلُوهُ إِلَّا قَلِيلٌ مِّنْهُمْ None would have done it except only a few of them, those people who are true in their iman. What does Allah say? That walau annahum fa'alu ma yu'aduna bihi, and if they had done what? Ma yu'aduna bihi, that which they were advised with, that which they were counseled to do, exhorted to do. Yu'aduna, notice it hasn't been said ma umiru. It hasn't been said, ma'umiru. Amr is to give a command. You don't have a choice. You have to do it. But wa'al is to encourage a person to do something. Wa'al is to encourage a person to do something. So that he himself decides that yes, this is something that I should do. Do you understand the difference? Amr is, you don't have a choice. You have to do it. Wa'al is that you are encouraging the other person that he himself makes a decision that yes, this is good for me, I should do it. So, وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ فَعَلُوا مَا يُعَظُونَ بِهِ And if they had done what they were advised to do, what they were exhorted to do by the Prophet ﷺ, no matter how hard it is, لَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُمْ Surely it would have been better for them. It would have been better for them. Meaning, any command that the Prophet ﷺ gives whether you like it or you don't. Whether it is a clear instruction or an encouragement. Whether you find it difficult or you find it easy. If you follow the Prophet ﷺ, what does Allah say? لَكَانَ خَيْرَ اللَّهُمْ Surely it would have been better for them. Why? Because obedience to the Prophet ﷺ brings benefit to a person not just in this dunya but also in the akhirah. وَأَشْهَدَّ تَثْبِيتًا And more strong in firmness. أَشَدَّ As you know is from the word shadid. And what does shadid mean? Intense. So أَشَدَّ More intense. More strong. More severe. In what? In tasbeet. Tasbeet is from the root letter thabata. And what does thabata mean? To become firm. So tasbeet is confirmation. Firmness. Strengthening. So their obedience to the command, their following the world, would have been stronger in confirmation. What does it mean by the stronger in confirmation? This is understood in two ways. First of all, this was a stronger confirmation of their faith. This was a stronger confirmation of their faith. Up until now, what are people doing? Yaz'umuna. They're just claiming that they're believers. It's only lip service. But if they actually followed the command, then this would really show that they're really believers, that they're true believers. So, ashadda tasbita, meaning this would be a stronger confirmation of their faith. What would be? Following the commands, following the orders. It would really show that they are indeed believers. Secondly, wa ashadda tasbita has been understood as that it would be a cause of firmness and steadfastness of their iman. The more a person obeys, what happens? The more conviction he has. The more a person obeys, the more doors to obedience open for him. So, ashadda tasbita, if they had accepted this command, in the future it would have been easier for them to accept more commands, more instructions. Isn't it so that when you accept something initially, then it's easy for you to deal with it afterwards. And if you don't accept it at the beginning, then no matter what you do, it's very difficult for you to deal with it. So, ashadda tasbita, it would have been much better for them for their strengthening of their iman. 
And we see that the Sahaba, the sincere companions of the Prophet ﷺ, they obeyed the Prophet ﷺ wholeheartedly. They submitted to his commands inwardly as well as outwardly. Which is why we see that they accompanied him at the Battle of Badr. They accompanied him at the Battle of Uhud. And so many other battles as well. They were literally giving up their lives. Because going to a battle at Badr, just imagine you're only a few, 313 only, and your enemy is three times your number, even more, and you have hardly anything with you to defend yourself. So we see that the Sahaba, they completely submitted to the decision of the Prophet ﷺ, even though apparently it seemed to bring more harm to them than benefit. Why? Because when a person has yaqeen that this is the Rasul of Allah, this is the Messenger of Allah, وَمَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَى He does not speak out of his own desire, out of his own whim, that whatever he is telling me is for my benefit, then a person will accept. And when he will accept, then more doors of righteousness will open for him. And when he doesn't accept, then the doors of righteousness close for him. وَإِذَنْ And then. What does it mean by إِذَنْ? Meaning if... They accepted the command of the Prophet ﷺ if they remained firm, if they confirmed their iman by following the command, then لَآتَيْنَاهُمْ مِنْ لَدُنَّا Surely we gave them from near us أَجْرًا عَظِيمًا A great reward. Meaning, if they had obeyed the Prophet ﷺ as a result of that, we would give them أَجْرًا عَظِيمًا Why? Because as I mentioned earlier, that one righteous deed leads to more righteous deeds. So obviously the reward is going to be multiplied as well. And if a person does not even take the first step, is he going to go any further? No. Is he going to excel? No. Is he going to advance? No. And if a person takes the first step, no matter how hard it seems, then what happens? He continues to go on. Then he excels. Then more and more doors open for him. And as a result, لَآتَيْنَاهُ مِنْ لَدُنَّا أَجْرًا عَظِيمًا A great reward. وَلَهَدَيْنَاهُمْ And surely we guided them صِرَاطًا مُسْتَقِيمًا To a path that is straight. Meaning as a result of this, we would continue them in their hidayah. We would lead them to the correct path. And remember that throughout your life, what are you wondering? What I'm doing, is it really right? Is it really the right thing to do? But when a person is constantly obedient, that whatever command of the Prophet ﷺ he finds out about, whatever command he learns from the Qur'an, then as a result, what happens? He increases in his hidayah. He increases in his guidance. So what do we learn from these three ayat? That a person, he can only have steadfastness, he can only act upon what he learns when he has determination, when he has azm, when he has yaqeen. Because if you don't have yaqeen in the fact that this person who is telling me is the Prophet ﷺ, then how will you obey? If you don't have yaqeen that apparently it may seem harmful, but this is in fact good for me because Allah is commanding me, then how can you do it? So what is needed is iman and yaqeen. And the only way of having steadfastness is through yaqeen. And remember that azm or yaqeen or Determination. How does a person have this? When he curbs two things. What are they? First of all, shahawat. And secondly, shubuhat. When a person gets rid of these two things. Shahawat and shubuhat. What are shahawat? Desires. Like for example, we know that we should pray fajr salah before fajr fard is to sunnah. And what do we learn about those two rakat? That they are better than dunya wa mafiha. They're better than this dunya and everything within it. Now, one is that a person follows his shahawats, his desires that no, I want to sleep. I want to sleep. And just 10 minutes before the salah expires, he gets up and prays the fard. So, what does it show? That he's not going to be able to do it. Why? Because his shahawats are coming in the way. So, you have to suppress your desires in order to obey. You have to suppress them, you have to control them. That you have to tell yourself, no, I cannot sleep any longer than this. And everybody has some weakness. Some people love to eat because of which they can't fast. 
Some people love to sleep because of which they can't study, because of which they can't recite the Quran. They pray Fajr and they can't stay awake and they have to sleep even if it means 15 minutes. Those 15 minutes could be spent in reading some adhkar and reciting the Quran, but it's the shahawat that overcome a person. And second is shubuhat. What are shubuhat? Doubts. Doubts. And how can you get rid of doubts? By knowledge. Another lesson that we learn from these ayat is that when a person leaves something for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or does something difficult, then what happens? His present state becomes better. His present state improves. And the outcome is also better. The outcome is also good. Many times we refrain from obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or doing something difficult. Why? Because we think we're not able to do it. Like for example, we think we're too busy and therefore I don't have time for nafil. I don't have time for dhikr. But if a person overcomes himself and does that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with, even if he finds it very difficult, then only his present condition is going to improve and then only his future condition is going to improve as well. We also learned that a person who accepts the commands of Allah, he will have firmness and the one who doesn't, he will stumble and he will fall. When a person accepts, only then he will have tasbeet. And if a person does not accept, then what's going to happen? He's going to stumble, he's going to fall. Because remember that this way, the way to Jannah is surrounded by what? By difficulties. By difficulties. And on this way is also shaitan who is trying to stop you, who is trying to make you fall at every step. So, if you don't accept the command of Allah, if you don't accept the guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you, go here, avoid this, go there, don't go this way, keep going straight, slow down now, speed up now. If you don't listen to the instructions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving, what's going to happen? You're going to stumble. You're going to fall. So the only way of remaining steadfast is obedience to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the only way. The only way. And if you think that, no, you don't need to follow the commands of Allah, I don't need to pray, I don't need to do dhikr, I don't need to make dua, then what's going to happen? The person can fall very easily. 